This week, I'm gonna show you how I built a very large summer house with my dad. So keep on watching if you wanna see how we did it. Okay, so this summer house build starts off here where the old flower bed used to be. And it was taking up a large chunk of the garden space. And after ripping everything out, my husband dug up all the topsoil and wheelbarrowed it to what would later be a veg patch. That'll be in another video and made that level. Meanwhile, I was doing something else in the house, which I've probably shared a video on that already. And after laying some weed control down, as you can see in the background, I started making the base in sections. But if you wanna see me talk more in depth about some of these, I'll leave a link to the shed video I did last autumn. And when it comes to sheds, my dad always makes the base first, then works his way up. And I'm making it using structural timber with spars evenly spaced out about 30 to 40 centimeters apart. And my quality inspector also made sure I wasn't slacking and did my job properly. Then to make sure it's square, me and my dad are checking the measurements diagonally to make sure it matched. You'll find the side with the longest measurement needs tapping with a hammer or kicking to shorten it to make sure they're all equal. Then I was asked to cut some braces with 45 degree mitre cuts. Doesn't matter about the length of these and I'd pre-drill and screw those to each corner to ensure it stayed square. Then I line it up with the first floor section, clamping and getting it level on bricks to prevent it from rotting on the ground. And my dad's using a straight piece of wood and a spirit level to check the longer sides. But before we carried on, my husband and I treated it with two coats on all sides before it started to rain. Then onto the following weekend, and it was a scorcher. And we worked on building the main body of the shed. If you want to follow my written tutorial on this, I'll leave a very detailed blog post below in the description. And at this point, my dad propped up the base on this makeshift table. And what you'll notice is that he uses the base as a template. And if you've made that square, as me and my husband are checking in while both sections are together, my dad builds all four sides of the shed while stacked up on top of the base. And we're starting off with the back of the shed. We placed a long structural piece of timber along the bottom, making sure it was dead level at one end. Temporarily placed another structural timber against the first one and another long ways and drew under it where the end of the base lied. And I marked P for pattern because that first cut I needed to match four times because if you keep matching your next cut, you'll notice it probably gets bigger and bigger. After that, I started to nail the frame to the base to ensure it was square throughout. I must admit, I do prefer screwing the next frame down to the bottom one, but since we're stacking it, we couldn't do this. Then to screw more spars, we marked them about every 19 inches on a 4.8 meter length. and align the top piece with our 19 inch marks before placing it in the middle to temporarily hammer it down in the middle of each spar to prevent movement. Now I'm about to create a pitch roof. So we marked 1900 millimeter from the bottom for the lowest part of the roof, then placed a large batten on the inside of the 1900 mil pencil line and angled it towards the center spar. My dad said it was also a good idea to mark C for center on that center one to prevent confusion. So after finding the center spar, I lined it up with the opposite 1900 millimeter side and top of the center spar and drew on the inside where it lied on each spar. I repeated it on the other side, then cut along my pencil lines for an angled roof. And to add a top piece, we needed a mitre cut to match the roof. And I held one of the lengths up to the edge of the center spar and ran my saw along the straight edge, which naturally created the mitre that we needed. Again, repeated for the opposite side. That way they could perfectly join together before pre-drilling and screwing them down to each spar. But when I got to the overhang, I just sawed those off. 
Then to remove that temporary spar that was keeping everything in line. So that would be my next long side, but this time I'll be making the front of the summer house. I'm now nailing it to the frame of the first one and we're gonna completely mirror it. But this time, screwing the top sloping roof section to the bottom roof section. Once we had the top and bottom matching, I could line up another spar along the sides, hold a straight edge against it and draw underneath where it lied to get my new cutting line. And pre-drilled and screwed it together and more overhang cutting. Now before we fix the spars in, this time we're working around where we wanted to fit the plastic windows and doors. That meant we needed to measure the width and height of all of them to fit them in. But we added about five mil to the measurements so it wouldn't be too tight. So for the pair of doors, we worked out the halfway point and split it equally along the bottom and positioned a long edge across to get the same equal measurement along the top. Something I wanted to point out, although it may seem obvious to some of you, is that it's cheaper to build around a second-hand or X-display door or window because buying something very specific is so much more expensive. And after finding the position for the spars around the door, pilot hold and screwed. Then I could carry on with the rest of the spars but leaving a gap for the two second-hand plastic windows to fit. For these, we put them in situ fitted some horizontal spars and extra supports around them the same needs to be done for the double door too And that's a front framework done. Next, we needed to work on the sides. So again, I'm stacking and building as I go. But this time, I think it's around half of the front and back's width, ensuring it matches what's left of our base. We're planning around another small window and a gate style door for access, which we'll make later. And then finally, to make the last side with no access and some easy, straightforward spars like we did for the back. My dad also asked me to make some more mitered cut corner braces using some offcuts, which I fitted into the corners, again to keep things square. We're now working on the roof in two parts, which we created with overhang. Here, my dad is cutting a narrower piece for me to add dead level on the end, which I screwed on. Again, more matching the first one as we nailed the second half of the roof's frame down to the first, and once that was mirrored, we set those aside to get cladding the shed itself. So obviously this is how it looks in the end, but unfortunately I'm gonna to have to split it into two parts at least. But if you've got any questions so far, then feel free to comment below and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, bye.